In this video we're going to look at the structure of the Earth. The outer layer is a rocky layer called the crust and it's approximately 70 kilometers deep. The crust is the layer we know most about because that is the layer at the surface and it is easiest to study. Within the crust and the atmosphere above it we have discovered a number of different elements, around 100 in total, all of which have been arranged in the periodic table of elements. This element here is an important one. This element is iron. And on Earth we have found elements that are heavier than iron. What this tells us is that the Earth was formed after a massive explosion of a star called a supernova. Because elements heavier than iron are only formed during these supernova explosions. The mantle beneath the crust can flow. It's mostly made out of solid rock, but slowly the hottest rock rises and the coolest rock falls. So in the mantle we've got a slow flow of convection currents of this hot rock. The centre of the earth is called the core. It's divided into the inner core and the outer core. The outer core is mainly liquid iron and nickel. The inner core is solid. So how do we know? Well, the crust of the earth is around 70 kilometers deep. However, the deepest hole ever dug is only approximately 12 kilometers deep. So how do we know about the structure of the earth deeper than 12 kilometers down. Well, there's three main pieces of evidence that scientists look at. First of all, they study the rocks on the surface. That tells us a lot about the structure of the Earth and what elements exist on Earth. Secondly, studying volcanic activity has given them lots of information about the mantle. The molten rock from the mantle can creep up through cracks and can be seen near the Earth's surface. So here, scientists can study the composition of the mantle. We call this hot molten rock underneath the Earth magma. And during a volcanic eruption, when that magma is released, we then call that lava. So when the lava cools, it's a lot easier to study and we can have a look at the elements that make up the mantle. And finally, studying shock waves from earthquakes has helped scientists understand which parts of the earth are solid and which parts are liquid. When an earthquake happens, two types of waves are generated called S waves and P waves. As these waves penetrate through the earth, they tell us a lot about its structure because S waves can't travel through liquids but P waves can. So if we had an earthquake happening here on the globe, for example, we could perhaps study how those waves travel through the earth and detect them at another point on the globe and study how those S and P waves travel. And that'll give us an idea of the different sections of the earth and whether they are solid or liquid. Sitting above the Earth's crust is the atmosphere and the atmosphere is a mixture of different gases that surrounds the Earth. The layer of the atmosphere closest to Earth is called the troposphere and this is where most of the weather takes place. Up from the troposphere up to about 50 kilometres you have the stratosphere. So this is where we have aircraft travel and also within this layer is the ozone layer which plays a really important role in maintaining life on Earth because it absorbs and scatters the UV radiation from the Sun. The next layer, extending up to approximately 85 kilometers, is the mesosphere. And within this layer, this is where meteors that enter the Earth's atmosphere normally burn up. If they do survive traveling through the mesosphere into the stratosphere, down into the troposphere and to Earth, we would then call that a meteorite if it actually strikes the Earth, but most of them burn up within the mesosphere. 
And then we have the thermosphere above that extending to approximately 640 kilometers and this is where a lot of our satellites are positioned. And on top of that the very outer layer of the atmosphere is called the exosphere. The air is most dense in the troposphere so the air is made out of a mixture of gases and it's most dense here and it decreases in density the further you get away from Earth. Now we're going to look at the composition of the atmosphere. This just means what makes up the atmosphere. So the majority of the atmosphere is made up by a gas called nitrogen and that is approximately 78% of our Earth's atmosphere. Oxygen takes up approximately 21% of the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide, which is greatly talked about in terms of global warming and climate change, only makes up around 0.04% of the atmosphere. So it's a tiny percentage of the atmosphere, but it's still causing a problem. And that percentage of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere rising is what's causing us great concern. And there are some other gases, for example, argon, in tiny amounts in the atmosphere, altogether making up the rest of the atmosphere. But they are around less than 1% altogether. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video, then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at GCSErevisionMonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at ScienceSurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos, as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.